Hello! One last chapter of Half Blood Prince today, and that is the White Tomb. Our goodbye to Dumbledore, though we, we know full well it won't be the last time we see him. And in fact, he features quite heavily throughout the um, Deathly Hallows. So, he's gone but not gone, which is exactly what Harry says to Rufus. The title of this video is not necessarily the one I really want to choose. Um, I've chosen uh, facing everything head on. What I really want to say is no more bullshit. That is to say that within this chapter we see uh, the, the Golden Trio and Ginny, for the most part, uh, but we see some of the other uh, sort of minor characters falling into this as well. Um, Remus and Tonks, Fleur and Bill, moments like this, where they're facing this moment and it's this recognition of, okay, no more bullshit. This is what we're going to do and, and we're facing the problem head on. It's sort of interesting to see then the characters who do accept this and the characters who don't. Harry, of course, as we're following him, really has... he's having this moment at the funeral that he finally can cry, and along with it it's this recognition of there's always someone that's been standing between him and the worst of the war, and the worst of the world. And he notes it's his parents, Sirius, and then Dumbledore. And it is this moment he says, no more. I will not have anybody else standing between me and Voldemort. If this is how it is going to go down, which he's discussed with Dumbledore, and unfortunately this is how it's going to go down, He's making his choice about how he's going to meet it, and it's with his head held high, just like his parents, just like Sirius, just like Dumbledore. It is this moment of, okay, I know my position in this war, and I'm not going to run from it. I'm not going to hide behind anybody else. I know what I need to do, and I'll do it. And the first person that he really communicates any of this to, of course, is Ginny. Because it is this moment that he knows that she can't come. And so he tells her that, and she is just as no bullshit as he is. With the recognition of, you're doing this because you think it, like, it, it's, it's your heroics again. I can handle myself. But she's not going to cry. She's not going to tell him not to do it. She's not going to completely argue. She's, she tells him, like, straight up, you're being an idiot. But I understand. And I don't think I ever really got over you. I don't think I probably will. So when all of this is done, you and I, we're going to figure this out. But she gets it. She doesn't try and tell him that, oh, he can't do this. Like, I, I, I think you're wrong, but this is war, and we have to do what we have to do. And then it's Ron and Hermione that he speaks to, um, very directly telling them, I'm not coming back. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I know what I need to do, which is find the Horcruxes. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I can't come back here. This is no longer the place I can be. I have a job to do, and I need to face that down. And both Ron and Hermione are just like, yeah, cool, you're gonna try and walk away without us, but you're not going to. Like, we are with you. And Hermione tells him very directly, like, you've told us before that we have a chance to turn back. We've had time to think about it. We're not turning back. Just like Neville and Luna, who actually came when Harry and the Golden Trio called. It's this recognition of, okay, now we fight. And, and we do it as we have to do it. 
In between Ginny and Ron and Hermione, we have Rufus, who has not figured out this no bullshit thing anymore. He's still trying to talk around the subject and sort of tiptoe into Harry backing the ministry. And he's not willing to negotiate anything. It's Harry works with us and we give him like a couple of roars. <laughs> When it should be, Harry works with us, and we try to do the morally correct thing while fighting this war. No, he's not willing to face down not only the moral ambiguity of the enemy, but also his own moral ambiguity. And so Harry tells him, like, no, I'm still Dumbledore's man through and through. I'm facing this head on. You're refusing to. Goodbye. You've still got umbrage here who had the gall to show up to Dumbledore's funeral. No. Goodbye. And sort of on top of that, so we know that the Ministry is still going through this sort of not looking directly at the issues problem. The students have figured out, okay, we just need to look directly at it and talk very bluntly about all of this. The interesting sort of throw in here are the Murr people and the centaurs who have this moment where they pay homage to Dumbledore and then they walk away. It is very clearly a statement of mm -mm. till it comes to our door this is this is not us. We recognize we lost a great man and we mourn for him too. But this is not our war. And it's true, we're not going to see any of these uh, groups of people until the very end of things. They decide, you know what, like I said, until it comes to our door, we're done. More than likely because they recognize, just as Harry does, that the ministry itself is not... They're still bullshitting it. So we actually have these groups of people who are making their stands. And it's not a stand against Voldemort or against the Ministry or against Harry or against really anybody. It's a stand against whether or not we're bullshitting anymore. And some groups have decided that they're going to keep going. Harry and his friends, no more. We're going to face this head on. Because that's how we need to get through this. And it's how we might actually survive out on the other side. That's the decision they have to make. I respect them for it. Okay. So, hopefully uh, by the time we get to this point that I should have Deathly Hollows ready to go. <laughs> but we'll see. It's been a fun ride. I am in the process of moving, which is why you still at the old apartment and you'll probably see some updates from my new space. Uh, but I'm going to keep reading. And I hope you do too. See you when I see you guys.